Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 11th. First up, I would like to give a shout out to the Friday show. If you haven't caught it, it's a show that's produced by SCRC 401 and SCRC 401 First Officer, along with a lot of help from others such as Reed's Bud, Navy Thomas 8. As a matter of fact, this last Friday they were having some technical difficulties and Navy Thomas 8 jumped in and did some material for them and also a, a good promo for the show but I would like to promo it myself too. Best way to describe it is it's a comedy type of show if you were to take the Three Stooges, Hee Haw and a bunch of motorcycles and kind of ram them all together mix them up and make it into a show that's kind of what it's like. I, I think it's a very good show and I hope they keep up with it and they do it on a regular weekly basis for a long time to come. I also want to give a thank you to Navy Thomas 8 for helping me with one of the subjects in this show that I'm going to be talking about. We were in chat together, and he'd mentioned to me where it was I aware that the Curiosity rover does not have a microphone on board. And at first I couldn't even believe it, so I went to the website where it gave an equipment list of everything the Curiosity rover was carrying, and sure enough, there is no form of picking up audio on the rover whatsoever, which is rather unusual. Way back in 1999, when they attempted to land the Polar Lander, it contained a microphone package. As a matter of fact, it's, uh, it was developed based on hearing aid technology, and after that was unsuccessful, and cr they presume it crashed, they had after that the Phoenix Lander, which they were going to incorporate the same exact audio pickup system on it. It's a little thing. I'll put a picture up here to it. It's a, a little thing that I bet you doesn't weigh more than about maybe six ounces max. It certainly doesn't even weigh a half a pound, as you can see it in this guy's hand where he's holding it here. Already tested, already ready to go, so there's nothing new that really had to be developed. All they had to do basically was find a place and stick this aboard Curiosity, so I don't know why they didn't do it, especially since it has mechanical parts, moving parts, anything like that, that if you have somebody that can pick up on what audio is like, especially a good mechanic, there are certain sounds that bearings, gears, things like that make when they're going bad, and a good mechanic can pick up on that sound very easily, so why they don't have that, let alone any particular sounds maybe that Mars has that we're not aware of. It would have been the first time we actually got audio from Mars, and for some reason they did leave that off, especially the fact that you can ask the question to the Mars um, team, and they will answer you, at least with the robot answer, saying it doesn't contain a microphone, but they won't give you any reason as to why. So that still kind of leaves me with a, a little bit wondering, and uh, I wish they would make a better job at getting back to people. Nonetheless, there's also a channel called JPL News that I want to promote on YouTube where they have some of the first low-resolution photographs, and they do them as a panorama view. So if you want to check out JPL News, and I will put a link down below to the, to the news channel and, and that particular video so that you can actually check that out. And if it's something you're interested in, I'm sure, for sure subscribe to JPL News because it's going to be something pretty pretty interesting. I'm hoping their their promo on YouTube so far has been the best of everything NASA puts out. I think is their stuff that's actually to YouTube has been their better stuff. So I would recommend that. Next up is my second subject. This is something I had been thinking about at the end of last season's TDD report that I wanted to bring up. Uh, we've, as people that use the internet, we've been through the uh, all the DMCA and all the uh, MPAA kind of legal hassle with dealing with movies and, and people sharing movies, people sharing mp3 files and dealing with that kind of legal mumbo jumbo put forth by lawyers that have a lot of time on their hands and uh, nothing better to do than to bankrupt uh, single moms. For example, Jamie Thomas that for sharing 33 songs basically is going to be bankrupt for the rest of her life. So uh, not exactly punishment fits the crime, but I want to get you guys opinion on what I think is the next wave of this is going to be coming about if the lawyers choose to do it, which I don't see lawyers backing down on anything that's possible to be doing. How about replicator style printing of real objects now? Some of you probably have seen the demos already on YouTube and other channels where you can actually take a printer that prints out layers of plastic and bit by bit over maybe several hours you can make pretty much any object that can be made out of plastic. Well now these such as the one by MakerBot uh, it's around $1,700 now. A lot of these are getting below $2,000, which is a price point that makes it pretty much affordable for anybody if you want to actually make something. Another example, and I'm getting these out of the June issue, the invention issue of Popular Science Magazine, so if you get a chance to check that out at the library. There's also one called 
probotics.com and they have a CNC router to make different wood products. I'm guessing you could probably also use it on some soft plastics. But we're getting to the point, I think within the next 10 years it'll be rather trivial for under $2,000. The reason why the cost is getting so low, by the way, too, is a lot of these incorporate um, just the mechanical parts without the computer brain. And what you do is you actually plug your computer into it to to perform the, the computations for it so they can knock down the price on some of these just because of that fact of using your laptop instead of having to build an entire computer aboard these different replicator style machines. But what do you think about it? If it does get to the point where you could take a slab of soft metal, a slab of plastic, a slab of wood, basically put it into a 3x3 three by three box, 3x3x3 three by three by three foot, uh, put it in the box and basically just, you know, by whittling away material, make whatever kind of object you want. Or in the other case of just printing it layer by layer, it's, uh, if you take a look at these uh, ones, I'll put the, the photographs up of these two um, machines, the one from MakerBot and the one from Robotics. To me, it seems like we're very, very close to where pretty much everyday objects, you won't have to go and actually buy them at the store anymore. You can make them yourselves. What I'm thinking is, in the long run, it's not going to really hurt a lot of manufacturing because you're probably not going to want to pay $12, $15 in raw materials to make a cup or a, a bowl or something, some ordinary object like that. But let's say you're a biker and you uh, drop your CB, you know, your uh, CBR Honda or something like that, crack the plastics. Well, a little uh, two foot by foot and a half piece of plastic, when you go to the dealer, you might find out you have to shell like 80 bucks, 100 bucks, maybe even 130 bucks for this little piece of plastic to snap on the side of your bike. Wouldn't it be a lot easier just to uh, glue it back together, make a scan of it, and then just print out a copy while you sleep overnight, just program your machine, wake up in the morning, and there's your brand, brand new piece of plastic ready to snap on your motorcycle. Or uh, take a block of plastic and use a CNC router to basically just carve it out of a, a block of plastic and there for maybe 20 bucks, 30 bucks worth of raw materials, you've got your uh, little piece. I think in a way it may be better overall because the manufacturers, I know for these plastic pieces, the actual cost, even with development and everything like that, it can't be more than about 10, 15 bucks for these uh, little, you know, a two foot by, a two foot by 18 inch by let's say a quarter of an inch, even even if you were to make it thick half an inch, you're still not talking about a huge, huge cost and outlay. So I think the profit margins on that $130 thing that cost $20 or less to make, they, they need to kind of slim down a little bit. And this may give them the choice, the only choice to have to do that if they want to keep selling it to us because uh, for, for high, high profit margin objects like that, I think the replicator thing is really going to work. But... What do you think about it? Are we going to go through the same hassle again where any time you make a copy of something that a manufacturer has made, even for just your own personal use, I'm not talking about making copies and sell them, are we going to have to deal with the lawyers again? I mean, are they going to try to sue everybody in the world into oblivion, even the makers of these replicator machines? I mean, hold them responsible for people actually making parts. I kind of can see it coming myself. Last up, uh, I've been finally thinking about them so that about this myself and it's taken a long time coming but how many of you have actually cut the cord as far as you don't pay for any kind of television service anymore you don't you don't have cable TV you don't have satellite you don't have anything but maybe free over the air and even maybe you don't bother to even do that I'm seriously with Mythbusters coming to the end which was the last show I really thought was worth watching on a regular basis and it seems like uh, if there's gonna be another season it's probably gonna be the last one because they're running really short on ideas uh, how many of you have already cut the cable and basically uh, cut the cord and you're basically everything you do is on the internet. There's no more service that you actually pay for for television. Uh, I may end up holding on to my service till the end of football season this year, but I think it's pretty sure unless another show as good as Mythbusters comes along, which I don't really see, I think I'm going to join the people uh, at the end of this year and the beginning, probably right after um, February, that's when the Super Bowl is. That'll probably be my time to cut the cord because the savings, I mean, basically even a satellite package, which seems to be cheaper than cable, you can save easily $1,000 a year, and the $1,000 a year can sure buy a lot more entertainment. So anyway, let me know what you think. Make a comment. Uh, if you can, make a video response even telling me uh, what you think about any of these subjects whatsoever. I really would appreciate it. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.